everyone welcome back here to veteran nation and uh, we got a great show for you today uh, before we get started as always I want to remind everyone that you can subscribe to the network and to the show get a lot of extra content and you can do that by going to www.nrnplus.com all spelled out slash BN that's our landing page and if you're if you subscribe it's gonna cost you either 995 for the month or you can pay $79.95 for the year, get yourself a good deal, and then you'll have access to all the great content that we here have here at uh, NRN. And um, with today's show of Veteran Nation, this is something that we really haven't been able to do yet. This is special to me because when I decided that I wanted to do this show, uh, it, after I'd been approached by, by the network, I said, you know, I, I really wanna help veterans and that's that's been my goal since day one but i also i've wanted to tell your stories for all you veterans out there but also i wanted to get our older veterans get their stories recorded so that we could always be able to reach out to them and just get get their stories down so that other generations can hear what they have to say and with with today's show uh we're going to be doing just that with a veteran uh, I interviewed him uh, several months ago, and I've had some issues. I'm, I'm very limited with my equipment here as to what I can do uh, in terms of size of my computer, how fast it is, things like that. And also, I'm not a professional uh, you know, videographer or anything like that. I am just an amateur. I do the show. I've learned quite a lot doing this, and um, what, uh, what I've had to do is work around a couple pretty decent um, hurdles. Uh, I've had to learn a lot about sound, a lot about lighting, things like that. And when I did this this uh, interview, there was a lot of issues and I've, I've had to research and go through and I, I really had to improve the video quality and the audio quality. And I've, uh, I've been fairly successful in doing that. And uh, finally, I was able to get uh, this gentleman, his name is, uh, uh, Gregory Lunsack, but he went by George, and uh, I got his, he was a World War II veteran of the Coast Guard, uh, got some of his stories, and unfortunately last month George uh, passed away. And, uh, but I was glad that I was able to get his stories in his own words, have him, you know, just talk about the things that he had been through, and we were able to get the footage uh, get the audio cleared up quite a bit to where now uh, you can hear, uh, you know, everything he's saying. Uh, it's not perfect. This is not a perfect product. Uh, I'm going to be hopefully doing more of these. And uh, I'll be, you know, I've learned a lot with this one. I hope to learn a lot with some of the other ones coming forward. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, just this was a gentleman who had been through a lot in World War II uh, for the Coast Guard. He was at the Normandy invasion. Uh, his uh, his his boat was uh, or his ship was tasked with uh, uh, taking on survivors. Uh, they also did a lot of cool things. They they moved Japanese diplomats, and then he actually ended up in the Pacific theater uh, before the war's end. So uh, very interesting to talk to him uh, to hear all the things he had to say. Uh, he lived right out here near me here in Joshua Tree, California, so I was able to go to his home and spend some time with him and just listen to the things that he had to say, walked around his house, he was a tailor for his life, a uh, really interesting guy, and I'm very glad that we're able to, uh, to post this video. And this is, when it comes to this show, this is one of the things that I really envisioned that I wanted to be able to do. So. Uh, I'm very happy that I'm able to do it and for George and his family I'm I hope that they uh, can take away you know some things about George uh, if I can get the rest of the video cleared up I'm gonna do that and we'll we'll do a fuller video but uh, I got the the big parts that I really wanted the, or that I felt that the world would need to hear and uh, so without further ado here is my video with uh, uh, George Gregory George Lunsack. And uh, 
So I enlisted in 1941, and I got out in 45, I, I think, yeah. I, I, I liked my service, but see, when the old man commissioned the ship, he came down to every department, and I was the only one in my department, a tailor, nobody else, see, because I went to school, and they knew I knew my business. So that's why they put me. See, when after all the bus is left, I'm standing there alone. The guy says, get in the Jeep. I said, what the hell's going on? You know, about 800 men take off in about eight or nine buses. I'm still standing there. I felt like a reject or something. They took me to the ship. I said, that's my new home. Uh, General George M. Randolph. AP-115. When I got there, they gave me a life jacket, and I put it on, and for the first two or three weeks, I never took it off. When I went to party, when I took a shower, whatever, whatever, I never took it off. After about two or three weeks, I didn't know where it was. I knew there were life jackets in the lifeboats, see, so I knew they were there, there. but see, the, the troops were not allowed to go into the lifeboats. They had these big nets. It was like a cork square. And there was a net in the bottom. And then dumped those over the ship. So there's hundreds of them. And then the troops would jump in into the nets. See. But on th uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we had a feast you wouldn't believe. Everything. Like the Waldorf Astoria in New York. I didn't see any action. The only thing I remember, we were always far away from the firing. Mm -hmm. But there'd been three or four hundred ships, small ones, carrying maybe a hundred troops, fifty troops, two hundred troops, all around us. They had a name for that. I forget what they used to call it. Not a beret, beret, or a, I don't know. There was a name they called it. And then all those boats that land on the sand beach and then the flip the, and they drive the jeep off, not the jeep, but the tanks. Mm -hmm. Some of them had tanks. So they had three days to start the invasion to go into Normandy. So the weather wasn't too bad, but it was bad. So they said, hold it up a day to do it tomorrow. Uh, hold it up another day. The third day, they had to go in, otherwise they couldn't. They had a freedom, and uh, you know, so they would have canceled the whole thing. And Germans were sitting up in the mountains with the guns, five-inch guns, and, but they couldn't hit us. We were too far back. But the ocean was so rough. Those were the landing barges. It, it, they wouldn't even hit the sand beach. They'd hit. And turn over. The guys come over. Now they got a 60 pound back with a gun. They, they start to drown. But this I'll never forget. So we're pulling some of them up on the ship. They're coming up these ladders, the rope rope. So I'm pulling this guy up and he says, what the hell are you doing? I'm pulling him up. He's, I says, who are you? All I could see his eyes and his teeth. It was oil. Mm -hmm. So he says, Greg, I went to school with you in the needle trade. I said, I totally forgot, what the fuck are you doing here in the ocean? Yeah. Of all the places you meet him in the invasion. So I pulled him, he was hurt a little bit. So I took him down to the sick bay and cleaned him up and bandaged him up a bit. And we kept him on a ship. But uh, then they took pictures of us sitting in a tailor shop with the presser, uh, I'm sitting with my feet crossed, sewing something, and he's sitting at the sewing machine, and it was in the New York Times, New York Daily News. See, when the war was winding up in Europe, it was already being wound up, they sent us to the Panama Canal, and we went to Marseille, France, and we picked up embassy, uh, Japanese embassies that were in Germany. They had embassy people here and they had them there. So when they got on, there was about five women and about eight men and two little children. 
and the one woman was pregnant, and the baby was born on a ship. Well, that was an American citizen. I thought we dropped him off in San Diego, but we didn't. We were right through, and we went to Hiroshima. Six weeks after the bomb dropped, we were in Hiroshima. And I used to laugh because the women would walk six paces behind the men. Yeah, but I was all over the world. But I wasn't in, I was in, right after the war in uh, Tokyo, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And that's all. But we were on liberty there, see. They all quiet down. But I remember when Eisenhower, not Eisenhower, MacArthur, MacArthur, was a peace treaty. I watched it all on TV. And the uh, Japanese, they came out with silk hats, cut away, tux cut away tuxedos, everything, hold American flags. And I remember the interpreter, and MacArthur's telling the Japanese interpreter in English, Make sure you tell them this is unconditional, unconditional. So he tells them, now does he understand you said unconditional? <laughs> In my life, believe me, when I was in a dress business in New York, we used to have our fashion show at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. You want to mention names that I knew people, you'd say I'm a fucking liar. I did this job, and like 25 years later, I'm in the doctor's office in Eisenhower. And I picked up this magazine, this one, and I didn't even know it. And I'm looking at this. I made those drapes. So I started reading it. I know that son of a bitch. He was the decorator. He was a cuckoo. <laughs> All my life I've been lucky. Money I never wanted. I always had more than enough. More than enough. So that was the interview I did with uh, 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 George Lunsack, a uh, really incredible guy, uh, just had a lot of stories, a lot of things to say, grew up in Brooklyn, New York, uh, lived out here, died in Joshua Tree, California, uh, he was a survivor of the Normandy invasion, uh, and was very humble about his service, very, very fun to talk to, very interesting, uh, and just, you know, had a wealth of knowledge about just different things that he's done throughout his life and uh, I'm very I, I am very humbled and pleased to have have met him and heard his story and uh, I'm really glad that I was able to get his story out to all of you uh, so if you have any family members or anyone else uh, any veterans that you know that you think uh, have some cool stories uh, I would love to interview them uh, bring them on so that way future generations can hear about what they went through and beyond that that was uh, today's show and for those of you out there I thank you for being worth serving